it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe can you tell I'm excited for this video I am feeling myself right now this look it's given everything it needs to give I feel like the minute I put on a dark brown lip like game over okay it is over for you bitches I am here to stay and you're just gonna have to get used to it okay I am loving this. I am really loving this right now and my skin, okay. So we have a get ready with me video. I am trying out a bunch of new products but I'm killing a couple of birds with the same stone. You know, it's not just two birds. And the first of the birds is to show you guys how to create an eyeshadow look using cream eyeshadows. These are specifically MAC paint pots. I picked up quite a few shades. All the shades I have are matte, which is my preference when it comes to MAC paint pots is to get the matte versions. But they also have shimmery ones available and you can mix them in to create a shimmery look as well. But I prefer the matte one. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create a basic neutral look using MAC paint pots. But any cream eyeshadows in a pot form will do. I did a video recently where I created a eyeshadow look using cream eye pens from nude sticks I'll pop it up over here so you can check that out so that is another version of a cream eyeshadow look but that's in a pencil form this time around I wanted to show you how I would use it if it was in a pot form it's slightly different but it's a similar technique so I'm gonna do that in this video as well as try out quite a few new products okay so first on the list Valentino so I have a few Valentino products the foundation for sure I also have a new shade of the Victoria Beckham bronzer I have a couple of new lip products well I've had them but I haven't demonstrated them on camera a new glowy product I know this is the Auric glow lust and there are a few more new products mixed in so you're gonna see a lot going on in this video and it was just relaxing for me to try out new products with you guys and share my initial thoughts so if you want to see how I got this look which I think is really really pretty I am loving this right now so if you want to see this look how I created it and see me use all these new products then stay tuned and I will talk to you soon Alright guys, so as usual, we're starting off with a clean, freshly washed face. I already filled in my eyebrows and I went in with my moisturizer and today I'm using the Tidal Brightening Enzyme Water Cream from Sunday Riley. I'm trying to use that up, but I also really like it, so I'm low-key like trying to stretch it as well. But it's time for it to go, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the eyes. Oh my god, let me talk about this lip balm really quickly. My lips, I don't know what's happening. So last night I had on like a liquid lipstick. I was trying on and I forgot to put on my lip balm and my lips started stripping and I'm like, no, we can't have that. So I went in with my By Terry Balm the Rose. This is my nighttime lip balm. I wear this at night because it's really hydrating. It stays on my lips for a really long time and it keeps my lips from splitting and stripping, especially in the winter time, the colder months. This is fantastic so I pulled this out because it's like my save the day lip balm so I have that on now and I also okay I just pierced my ears let me let me let me let me just get y'all in here so I just pierced a fourth hole in my ear so I can use threader earrings but anyhow that's not the point right behind my ear right here where you know the little lobe meets my skin you know what I'm talking about right here behind my ear it's split as well and I'm like what is going on? So I also put some of the balm back there. I'll stay right here because we're going to do the eyes. So I also put some of this lip balm back there. It's not necessarily, it's for lips, but you can use it anywhere you need like a little boost of hydration. And I find that it really helps for chapped situations. So chapped lips and I feel like behind my ears are dry because I had sprayed alcohol. So when I clean my earrings, like I spray alcohol on them and then sometimes I'll spray a little alcohol on my ear but that dries the skin out and it ends up splitting and chapping behind my ear so that's why I put the lip balm. I just thought I'd mention that because I just did 
I know, but that's not what we're here for, all right? We are going to do a cream eyeshadow look. Well, we're starting off with a cream eyeshadow base look, and then I'm going to add shimmer. Let me pull out just a little, yeah, that's good. So I recently did a look where I use cream eye pencils to create a look, and I will link it over here so you can check it out. And this time around, I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and show you how to use cream products like paint pots, which I absolutely love. These are one of my favorite products from MAC, but not only that, they're one of my favorite cream cream products and one of my favorite cream eye bases. So we're gonna show you how to create like a basic look using these cream pots because I think that will also be helpful in addition to using the pencils. So I have four shades here, they're all matte. The other look that I did was also all matte. You can definitely incorporate shimmer types but I just prefer mattes for this kind of situation because I use them as eyeshadow bases. So. We're gonna start out with my favorite shade. This is Layin Low, and it's like a beigey tan shade. And I'm going to grab a Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. This is a dome-shaped blending brush, and you want to use synthetic brushes with cream products. So don't grab your natural hair brushes, even though some of them can work with cream products you want to go with synthetics because cream products can damage natural hair bristles. So just go in with synthetics and Real Techniques make some really great synthetic brushes. So I'm using Laying Low just on the start of my lid and on the inner tear duct and I'll blend it out. And now I want to build up some dimensions. I'm not sure if I want to go in with Groundwork, which is a deep tan shade, or use Taylor Gray, which is also a deep tan, but it has a gray undertone or a very neutral undertone. I'm also going to apply a shimmer shade and the shimmer shade that I'm using is more, mm, I think it may be more warm. So I'm gonna go with Groundwork and I'm going to pick that up on a, another deluxe crease brush from Real Techniques. The funny thing is, this is the older crease brush and then this is the newer one. And the new one is a little bit larger and flatter at the top. I like both, but I also like the old shape, so I'm sad they got rid of that. So I'm just applying groundwork on the outer lid space. This is slightly deeper than Lane Low, so it's going to give a little bit more dimension to that outer lid. Ooh, it's not as deep as I remember it being. Groundwork used to be really, really rich. Ooh, okay, so it's a little bit more neutral toned as well. I see a little bit of that grayish peeking through. This would make a perfect like one and done all over lid color just to give your lids a little something something and just leave it at that. This would be a great one if you have a slightly deeper skin tone than me and you wanted like a neutral tone for an eyeshadow base. That actually looks really good. Since that happened, I'm gonna grab Taylor Gray, which I know is deeper for sure, and pop that on the outer lid and crease area using the same brush. Yeah, there we go. So that's gonna build up dimension. This definitely has a stronger gray base. So if you wanted like a taupey color, this would be perfect for you. And MAC has so many paint pots now available. They have different colorful shades as well. They have shimmery shades and matte shades. The matte shades are more on the neutral brownie side. Some have like a gray undertone, but they're definitely more like brownie earthy tones rather than colorful shades. But they have like a bright orange, an orangey red, even the red and a green. I think the green is shimmery. I wanted to, ooh. Like right now, I could stop because this is so stunning, but you know me, I love a good dimension in the outer crease, so that's what we're gonna go in with next. The shade we're going to use is It's Fabstract, and this is a deep, rich brown shade, and I'm going to use a blending crease brush from Sonia G. This is also a good brand for synthetic brushes, and they are at drugstore prices. So if you wanted to grab a couple of synthetic brushes just for cream products, Sonia Kashuk and Real Techniques would be the ones I would recommend for you guys. And I'm using this brush to create a little bit of depth and dimension on that outer. Ooh, this color is so good. You need to work a little bit quickly because these dry down, 
but they don't dry down so quickly that you don't have time to work so don't worry too much but definitely still try to work quickly because they do dry down but what I like about these paint pots is they're very thin they're not too thick and like I said they don't dry too fast but they definitely dry down and set so I don't have any crease in but they also don't get crepey like a cream eyeliner would so there's a difference between cream eyeshadows and cream eyeliners so think about the ones from like lethal cosmetics or Inglot or even fluid lines from Max those have a thicker texture and they dry down super quick and they stay in place when you try to use those as like a cream eyeshadow or a cream base they can get very thick on the lids they tighten because they're meant to be long wearing and they just don't blend as easily because they're meant to be budge proof look at this look at this cream eyeshadow right now right look how easy that was to create this seamless blended dimensional look it's still very neutral but it looks like second skin like the color looks like it's coming directly from my skin it's not heavy looking it doesn't look cakey or creasy it's really nice so if you were looking for a really subtle way to wear eyeshadows that look like second skin this would be the way to go now I did say I was gonna use a shimmer but I wanted to first show you guys how to build a basic look with cream eyeshadows now again you can use shimmery cream eyeshadows as well I'm not doing that I'm actually gonna use one of my new products from Victoria Beckham so this is her lid luster in T rose it is a beautiful shimmery rose tone bronzy shade it's really stunning and it has multi-dimensional shimmer to it and I already know from trying these out that they're really difficult to pick up on a brush you're better off using your finger but my finger can't get in there right now so I'm using an a3 brush from Anastasia Beverly Hills this is also a synthetic brush and that's just gonna give me a light wash which is not bad let me try to get my finger in. It's so hard to get my finger because of my nail. It's hard to get my finger in there. But okay, I got a little bit. Let's try it that way instead. Which definitely works better. It's just that if you have nails, these little pots are not the easiest to get into. It's like I have to sacrifice my nails for this. Mm -mm, there has to be a better way. The synthetic brush kind of creates a coat over the eyeshadow. It seals it in it doesn't pick any product up but this color is really pretty and it can get a little bit flaky so I'm watching out for that but it's not too sparkly where there's glitter falling all over my face as I have fallout under my eyes right but no it's not as loose and sparkly as some shadows nowadays can be and I really like that so it applies well with my finger it's a little bit crepey if you can see but we're gonna blend that out with the brush and let me wipe off the fallout really quick before that settles in because we don't want any of it mm -mm, we don't want that so right away I already know that I'm going to need to figure out a way to use these Oh, while I have nails. So this is a expert concealer brush from Real Techniques, another synthetic. And I'm just using that to blend the color out just a little bit because again, it got a little bit crepey from where it got thick on my eyelids. Ooh, that's pretty. I want a deeper brown though in the outer V. Y'all are just gonna have to be a little mad at me, okay? Because I'm using a deep brown from my collaboration with Odin's Eye. So initially I wanted to include a dark brown just for this reason. And it just didn't go with the other shades. But I had to decide the colors that I was gonna put in there. And I just said, all right, we got to get rid of the brown. But I love this brown. Like this brown, when I got it, I was like, oh my God, I wish I could choose more shades because it would definitely be a part of the palette. But it was either this or Red Hills. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I should have used this instead of Red Hills. But Red Hills just goes with the palette so well. And the brown didn't necessarily go with all the other colors 
so I figured Red Hills was just a better option, but the brown, this dark brown, tell me that isn't fantastic. They did so well with these mattes. I was so impressed. And you can still get the palette. I think they just have a few left in stock. And again, come January, it's completely gone. But the brown though, y'all, right? Right? I know, I know, I'm sorry. I was gonna include it, but this is just for my personal use and you guys are just gonna have to be mad. All right, let's go in now with a new foundation. We're using this one from Valentino. Valentino is now available at Sephora, so I went ahead and picked up a couple of the products. So this is the Very Valentino Light Lasting Perfecting Foundation. It has sunscreen in it. This is Broad Spectrum SPF 26. The shade I picked up is DN2. I was a little bit skeptical about what shade to pick up because I wasn't quite sure, right? But these aren't in store, so I couldn't go swatch. So I just went by Instinct, and my Instinct usually works with foundations. So I went with a dark neutral shade. It's a little bit deeper than my skin tone, as you can see, but I'll just use a lighter powder. Well, the powder that I picked up is a little bit lighter. So it matches okay. Right? This is definitely gonna be better for me in the summertime when I get a tan. But, I mean, it's not a terrible, terrible match. It's a little bit warmer too than I expected, especially given that it says neutral, like D neutral. I wonder if DN1 would have been better for me. For some reason, the swatch of DN1 looks very pink and it looks very light as well. So I feel like DN2 is just my best option. And then I just have to make sure that I balance it out with like a lighter setting powder. You know what I mean? Because with me, I'd rather go a little bit deeper and richer than lighter because when I go lighter, there's an ashy cast and I can look gray. But if I go deeper, I can always offset it with a lighter setting powder and it usually looks much better and it looks warmer on my skin and it doesn't leave that gray cast behind. So I think we're gonna stick to DN2 for now. There is a slight fragrance to the product, but it's not heavily fragranced at all. Yeah, it's just a slight, slight fragrance, but it's not very strong. I just got a whiff of it, but it's not heavily scented like a Chanel or even a Dior. And I think that color works pretty well. Don't mind this, okay? So I did some skin tag removal. I know, that looks so terrible. I went to my regular um, esthetician and I asked her if she did skin tag removal and she's like, yeah, we'll show you. We'll just try it out for you because I went in for M Sculpt. Let me know if you guys want to hear me talk about M Sculpt. It's a non invasive sculpting procedure that uses electrical pulses to engage your core. So it strengthens your core and your abs and it tightens your stomach. So I went ahead and did that. I did, I did quite a few sessions already and I definitely see results and I documented it, but I don't know if you guys are interested in that. I was doing it for a few reasons. My core was really, really weak and I wanted to strengthen my core because when you strengthen your core, it helps with workouts and like other exercises. So it's really good to have a strong core. So that's the main reason, but also you get that added benefit of tightening of your stomach region. Now, obviously, it's not a weight loss procedure. I would definitely need to go do lipo. I also did cool sculpting, if you guys wanna hear about that, but I would never do cool sculpting again. The results, I, I didn't get me, okay? Nothing really happened, but it was super painful, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Would never do that ever again. No, that was awful. So, you know, I'm just trying out different things to sculpt my waistline. It's not so much any other area of my body. Like, genuinely, I like the added weight. Like, 
I like the fullness of my face a lot more and I like thicker thighs okay but my tummy is not you know I just want to just tighten that up and I'm trying like all the little shortcuts instead of actually just hardcore working out and watching what I eat so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna just listen I need to get back into the gym I was going to the gym for a little while but I like fell off after I did the cool sculpting because I was working out before the cool sculpting then I did the cool sculpting and the pain that I endured it was so painful I just I couldn't do anything so I put it off for two weeks because that's how long it took for the pain to kind of subside and after that I'm like Mm, you know and once you stop going to the gym you kind of end up not going back and then it got cold and then I found all the excuses okay I'm going in with a cream blush before I powder so this is from rare beauty it's from the trio set this is the shade hope so I just need to genuinely get back into the gym and I'm also trying to watch what I eat and drink not so much eat because I don't eat anything crazy but definitely what I drink, I drink a lot of soda, a lot of soda and not as much water as I should. So I've been trying out different seltzer waters. Okay, you guys should have warned me about, what is it called? Let me remember, um, LaCroix. Yeah, so I tried out LaCroix and it was disgusting. And then on Twitter, you guys were giving me feedback. You're like, yeah, we could have warned you on that one. It is disgusting. So hope doesn't really show up heavily on my skin, which is fine. It's fine. It's a very subtle blush. And I feel like this would definitely work if you're lighter skin tone or if you're wearing this on bare skin or if you're using it as a base for other blush shades or if you like a pretty natural very light blush on your skin if you're my skin tone because it gives a pretty little flush but you can't see it on camera because it's not very intense all right now we're going to use the valentino powder so i picked up just the refill of this i don't even know what shade it is jesus lord it is the go clutch oh what is what has happened what is this so this is the refill it comes in this and then you're supposed to buy the compact separately or you can buy it in the compact i was not trying to spend the kind of money that they wanted me to spend on the full compact child and it feels cheap and then i have one of the blushes which i'll use in a second but the whole thing feels cheap so i'm just setting everything with this powder so you see like the blush is pretty it, well you probably can't see it but it's a very subtle yet beautiful blush this powder while the foundation I'm still trying to feel out, the powder I'm in love with. I am in love with this powder. I'm going to low-key check out what the clutch is like because <laughs> I way want to have this powder for real, real. It gets like little spots on it, like when it gets wet, you know, from the moisture. Oh, I didn't even apply any foundation. I always forget to put foundation around my lip like my mustache area <laughs> always forget always like it never never ceases to mess me up anyway yeah so i'm going to check out getting this powder in the clutch because it is a nice powder the shade that i got is number four by the way which i think is dark but the powder is so stunning this is a bk beauty 105 brush I've been using the BK Beauty brushes. I like some of the face brushes. I don't like the eyeshadow brushes just based on how I use eyeshadows. I don't like their brushes, but I do love this 105 brush. So you see, right? I like, look at this powder on my, look. This is, ooh, child, this powder is beautiful. And I love a good powder because I always powder my skin. So this powder is giving me what needs to be given. Low key, let me check the price. Oh no, 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 no. The compact is $205. Absolutely the hell not, okay? Why the f fuck would I spend 200 no you mustn't matter your blood clot what 205 dollar your box side no and the powder itself the little clutch thing the little arm um, refill is 50 dollars why the blood don't make me rude to your valentino 
I will go ahead and, and keep it in this little cheap plastic thing because absolutely no way. What? You must see. No, I did buy it for I was like, oh, it's maybe like $80. It's $205. Me bumbo. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, all right. Let's keep it pushing, all right? Can it fit in the... No, it can't. I'm not the same size. Mm-mm. Come would I buy one of the blush them and put it in the blush compact if it would have fit, but it don't fit. Okay, so the blush I picked up is shade number five. Shade number five is Rosu Valentino, which is a red coral rose with light reflecting pearls. This is pigmented as hell. Okay, so this is eye to cheek blush and eyeshadow. So you can use this both as an eyeshadow and as a blush. And let me tell you right now, this is so good. I want, can I get, where, oh man, these are so pretty. I low key want to get a couple more shades. This is really pretty and I like the texture of it. It feels like a creamy powder. It doesn't feel like a full on powder. It's not dry, it's not loose. It feels like a cream, kind of like the face powder as well. There's this creamy texture to it, this creamy kind of vibe that makes it really seamless and beautiful on the cheeks like it is really stunning i do like this color quite a lot and you'll see me use these brushes from sonia g with my cream products a lot these are from the fusion series which is my absolute favorite collection from sonia g so far she just oh my god this brush from oh, the series all the brushes i love all of them so that's the blush which i think is stunning hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna order two more <laughs> i know right you know what i'm gonna actually order this on my computer so i can get my affiliate link yeah i can use it that way instead of using it through the app this is stunning. Okay, you know, oh my god, I forgot I wanted to try out something else. But let me go in with my bronzer first. So this is from Victoria Beckham Beauty. So I went ahead and picked up the deepest shade, which is number five. So I have number four, which works really well for me, and I love that bronzer. But I wanted to try out the new one, right, number five. This was out of stock for some reason. Kind of like the Makeup by Mario bronzer. He launched without the deeper shade. And it looks like Victoria Beckham also did that. So I'm going to use the lighter side. That is the contour shade. And pop it on the hollows of my cheeks. Hold on, my cousin is texting me. I got to answer this. I am going over to my aunt's house with my cousin. So that's what we're trying to sync up. This color is giving it to me. It's giving me like a little bit of, con you see that? Mm, it's it's gi definitely giving a little bit of contour. And I, ooh, I did, ooh, child. I put that on a damp spot. Mm, but it blend, ooh, yeah, it blends out fine. Okay, that's cool. All right, let's go in with the darker shade as a bronzer on my hairline. Now this is obviously for deeper skin tones. But I want to see how it works on me. So I'm actually going to go between the two shades to mix them in. Because the dark shade is just a little bit too rich. So I'm going to mix the two together instead. And apply it. And I'll apply a little bit on my hairline as well. Oh, did I tell you about the skin tag? Did I finish that story? So I did the end sculpt, right? <laughs> so when I went in, I was like, hey... How about, if you guys want me to talk more about the M Sculpt and the Cool Sculpting, just let me know. But, yeah, I just need to work out. But that's not the point. I was trying to tell you guys that when I went in for the M Sculpt, so you, you're there for a half an hour, you know, with the machine going. So while that was getting done, she was like, all right, I'll just do the skin tag removal just to show you how it is and see if you want to continue. Because I think I have like five more I want to get rid of. So it's on my neck. And she's like, if you wear a necklace, especially since she's brown, okay, she's Indian. Lord, we trying to get my niece and she just woke up, okay? Like, get it together. 
So, um, what was I saying? Right. So she's Indian. So she knows like what I go through because my mom's Indian. So I have that heritage as well. So she was saying to me, listen, you need to make sure that you put sunscreen on your neck, which I've been doing. And that's what I told her. I'm like, yeah, once I noticed them, I was like, oh crap, I haven't been putting sunscreen on my neck. And I have like here exposed a lot. I'll have sunscreen on my face and my arms and my legs and stuff, but no sunscreen on my neck, which is like, what was I thinking? Right? So she's like, you need to wear sunscreen on your neck so I have my sunscreen for my neck oh and I got the new Neutrogena um, water gel the water gel sunscreen from them so I really love their hydro boost oh god let me get it this is their hydro boost hand cream I've been using this for my dry hands and then the hydro boost sunscreen this is really lightweight as well so I was like okay perfect I can use that on my neck because it's lightweight and I don't like heavy sunscreens. They just, oh, my skin is looking so pretty. The blush, like the dewiness of the liquid blush is showing up. And then the blush color itself is really pretty. It's subtle though, and I like that. And the bronzer looks really good. The foundation is kind of nice too, actually. I am liking this so far, but I really love the powder the most it's just fantastic so i'm gonna do my mascara this is just from rare beauty and then um i'm thinking i'll do lashes as well so let me just pop this on and then maybe i'll show you the lashes because the lashes that i got are from lily lashes i think these are gonna be too much this is a Lily Lash um, collaboration with Sephora. It's a lot, but they have like the liquid liner in here. I've been using the Kiss Liquid Lash Liner. So wait, it's not, that's not what it's called. It's Lash Glue Liner from Kiss. I've been using this and it's fantastic. All you need to do is like use this on your lash line and then pop on your lashes and they adhere really well. But I wanna use the Lily Lash one that I just picked up to try it out and I'll use it with their lashes. So. We're gonna try this out in a second. I actually have, you know what, I'm gonna use the highlighter product that I picked up as well, but let me go ahead and do the mascara and I'll be right back. Whew, all right, so you guys know I love a good tangent because every time I start talking, I end up on another topic. Anyway, I was talking about the water, right? So I tried LaCroix and it was so disgusting. Ugh, like it's so nasty, but like seltzer water just tastes nasty, period. And people are like, oh, try AHA, cause I'm like, give me suggestions, cause I need to get this soda under control. Like I. I like the fizziness of it but is it the bubbles that I like the fizziness or is it the sweetness because I'm not sure or maybe it's a combination of it so drinking my water child so I was like all right tell me what to try so people are like try AHA which is also at Target or bubbly so I picked up two flavors of that to try out and I tried the AHA one I tried the peach and honey one because I was like all right maybe that's sweet you know <laughs> Tastes bad. It tastes really bad, and I'm just like, it tastes better than Lacroix. So maybe I just need to like acquire the taste, kind of like you have to do with beer. I've never acquired the taste of beer or liquor for that matter. I don't like liquor. I don't like the taste of it. And for me, it's almost like it's giving me that kind of vibe, like beer maybe, and I have to get used to that. This my skin. I am loving my skin right now. Okay, I still have to test this out more, like the, the Valentino stuff. But I'm liking it so far. Alright, so for the highlighter, I said I had a new thing, right? So, I'm not, I don't know what to do with the, with the, the, the seltzer, like the, the fruity water. I think I'm just gonna have to drink water, child. I'm just gonna have to suck it up. I don't mind water, but I wanted something else, you know, not just water. Because I can't, honestly, I'd be bored if all I drank was water, so... Here we are. Anyway, I got two of the Auric um, Glow Lust products. I have been putting off trying these because I don't like liquid highlighters. I don't like glowy products like that. I'm not here for it, okay? But I finally bit the bullet. I picked up one of the Holiday Smoke Reflex. This is an anti so That's the green one, the olive tone one, which is really rich and dark, which I love. And then I picked up Defiance from the, the regular line. We're going to try that out. But today, we're going to do the glow list. So I have the shades Citrine and Sandstone. And I think Sandstone is one of the newer shades that's in between. I don't, like, I feel like Sandstone, because it's a lighter one. The, the packaging, beautiful, right? It looks stunning. It's really nice, but the cap for come off, my goodness. 
the cap is awful like it gets stuck and I'm just like what the hell why is it on so tight I don't like the tight things <laughs> so I'm gonna use sandstone the citrine one is a little bit maybe I can mix the two like I said the cap is just it's on really tight I'm gonna mix a little bit of the citrine in with it it's a little bit more on the golden side while sandstone is supposed to be more neutral. So we're gonna use my finger for this, I feel like. This product, from what I've tried so far, it's a lot thicker than any other liquid highlighter I've tried. And that actually makes it feel a little bit better because it feels like a thick, like creamy, like a creamy liquid, like a less viscous liquid and I really do like that because I feel like it's more foundation like and less just like straight up liquid running down my face that I can't be bothered with and I feel like I am gonna definitely like these a lot more and I held off because like I said I don't like liquid highlighters I feel like they're just too shimmery too oily too greasy but this, the way it applies, I feel like, let me see what my niece is saying. Okay, so she wants to run to Zara. Oh, here she goes. She'll meet us there. She ain't gonna meet us nowhere. But I feel like these just apply really well to the skin. And even over powder, it's still applying well. Now, I wouldn't cake this up over powder because like I said, it's a little bit thicker. So it can give you a heavier look to the skin. But you see how it's not overly shiny or dewy, but it still looks glowy and healthy on the skin? Everybody else that I've seen use these, they just look extra glowy and extra shiny. And I'm like, mm-mm, I have oily skin. I don't need all of that on my face. No, ma'am. And they never truly look just lightly glowy. And I think this makes me lightly glowy. Like, if I take the light off my face, right am i am i tripping i think it's very beautiful um, but i'm gonna wear it today and see how it goes um let me powder right here because that is around the t-zone it's not accentuating any of my pores but i just know how my pores are so i'm not trying to have that be shiny so i'll just powder over that because i don't want it to get too greasy but you see how nice that looks that looks really pretty. I mean, it's not intense, but it's really, really pretty. All right, lips. What shall we do for the lips? I don't have a new lip product. Should we, oh, the eyelashes. Forgot to tell you all about this because I was gonna apply these with you guys. You see what I'm saying? Like, I go all over the place. I don't think I have ADHD. I'm not gonna say that's what I have because I, I don't think I do, you know? But I do a lot of multitasking and I, I do a lot of things all at once. And then, I mean, I get around to everything. It's just that I go like little chunks at a time and I end up all over the place. But here are the lashes. So this is Style Miami. So you can get that individually but I am really curious about this liner the kiss one works really well but I want to try out this one as well I don't mind using a glue liner because I can use a very thin line versus the magnetic lashes that I spoke about in one of my last videos I will link it over here in case you're curious when I use the magnetic liner I have to put too thick of a line down and I am not the biggest fan of that but with these lash liner glue things, you don't have to put a thick line down. You can put a very thin line, which is what I prefer. So I am going to snip off a bit of these lashes because they're just way too wide. And the lash band is kind of thick. All right, so I'm gonna shake the liner up. All right, let's zoom you guys in. And the liner is a felt tip, so I'm just gonna go right against my lash line. It's black, so if you're not interested in a black liner, oh, I already messed up. See, this is why I don't do, I already, oh my God, I blinked and it, it's smudged. It's fine, it's fine. I can clean that off, but I'm just gonna apply that to the lash line. If you wanna try this alternative to applying like lash glue directly on the lashes, this might be easier for you and you can get a clear one because Kiss has a clear one so you don't have to just use the black. So far this isn't like gliding over 
the lash line as easily as my kiss one does but we're gonna go ahead and pop this on anyway so you don't have to wait for it to dry very long because it sets down pretty quickly and then you pop the lashes on that is actually re oh that popped on really easily that was very surprising all right let's see on this side what it does I think this is a much easier method of applying lashes these feel oh god this is too far in I thought these were gonna feel too thick and heavy because these are really chunky lashes for sure but they feel really lightweight I don't really feel them on my lashes ooh yes okay they're very they're very big they are, ve where am I going with this? Oh my God, this is definitely not my style. This is not my style, but the liner worked really well. So, okay, so far so good. Like I said, Kiss has a liner adhesive. They have a clear version and a black version and they're definitely less expensive. You can find them in the drugstore and then you can use coupons for them. And I really like the Kiss one. I just wanted to try out this one because I've heard so many good things that I'm like, all right, let me try it out. The Kiss one is really great. And what I like to do after I apply the lashes, just to secure the corners, because like I said, this dries really quick. You can just go in and apply a little bit more of the liner to secure the lashes in place. And the Kiss one just, yeah, the Kiss one is better. Okay, right away I can tell you the Kiss one is better. It's a much more intense black and it glides on a lot better. It's still a felt tip, but it glides over eyeshadow, which is what I need it to do. It glides over eyeshadow really well. It picks up really easily over the eyeshadow. So go for the Kiss one, the Lily Lashes one. You can do without that one. It's, it's, not, it's not that, eh, it's okay but it's not like blowing me away right now. Um, let me pinch these lashes together because they are intense and I need to actually eat something before I leave and go to my aunt's house because I don't think they're gonna cook because I don't even think they know that we're coming. Cause I didn't, yeah, we said we were gonna surprise them, so. Ooh, yes, okay, what shall we do on the lips? I would actually just go in with a lip gloss right now, but since we're on camera and I need this to be a little bit more punchy, let's go in with one of the cream lipsticks from Huda Beauty. So this one is self-made. It's a rich dark brown. Uh-huh, I really do like that. These are very creamy. They're an excellent formulation. There are some fun nude colors. You can definitely find one that's right up your alley and they're very comfortable. Now, as they age, I've had these for a couple of months now. As they age, they get a little stickier. I'm using uh, Boss Chick now on the center of the lip. This is l slightly lighter. They get slightly stickier as they age, which is not necessarily a good thing. That can affect like the life of the product. I'm also gonna go in with a little lip liner. This is also from Huda Beauty. It's a lip contour 2.0 in the shade Rich Brown. This is amazing. The lip pencils, definitely recommend. The lipsticks too, but I feel like they're gonna have a shorter shelf life because they tend to get a little bit sticky. This lip liner though. Oh my god, it's so good. This one is so good. I got a couple more shades as I'm trying to line this. I got a couple more shades, but this one is definitely my favorite, especially since I like to wear darker brown lipsticks. And if I wear like a nude, I can also use this to darken up the lip line and blend it out. But she has various shades, but the lip contour lip pencils, absolutely excellent like top notch and I do like the lipsticks as well they're very creamy like I said and they feel very comfortable on the lips so here you have it <clears throat> this is the final look and I am feeling this shut up I am feeling this right now the skin is giving it to me I love how the foundation is looking I'm loving the powder as well 
The cheeks, I'm loving this Glow Less powder, but I definitely lost some of my blush. So I'm going to go back in with a little bit more blush. I feel like that has to do with the fact that I applied the Glow Lust after. But also, my cheeks eat blush up, which is why I like to layer a cream or a liquid blush first. And then top it with a powder blush to really like lock it in. Because my cheeks, I don't know, as soon as I apply blush at the start of the video, by the end, it's gone. Did that blush even exist at any point in my life? Because it goes away so quickly. So I don't know if it's just this blush that fades or if it was the, the combination of the Glow Lust and my cheeks just eating blush that made that disappear. But punch that up just a little bit. I am loving the skin. The bronzer actually works really well. I really like the Victoria Beckham bronzers. So this is definitely right up my alley. I'm loving this. And this deeper color actually works really well for me. Even though I'm a little bit lighter. But this is working really well. I love the number four. But I feel like this also works well. The lips. I'm loving this already. The lashes actually feel pretty comfortable and they applied really well. The eyeshadow, I showed you the paint pots. I already know and love these. And even the little tea rose from Victoria Beckham, that was cute too. Now, they're expensive, so I don't think you need to break the bank to get something like this. Because there's so many other brands that you can get the same effect from. But the Victoria Beckham one, she's cute. She's difficult to pick up though. So I'm like, was it worth checking out? I don't know, but... Everything else is killing it. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to test out, again, the foundation. We're going to test the wear today. And then I'll also give you like my a future video where I actually test the wear for you guys on its own. But right now with the powder and everything layered up, it seems to be doing pretty well. It looks amazing on my skin. And like I said, the match is working out pretty well. And I need to test out the Glow Lusts a little bit more because I don't think the way that I use it today is the way I would necessarily use it in the future. So I'm going to test it out various different ways and then of course do a video for you guys. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed getting ready with you guys. I'm about to run out. My cousin is going off. She can't take it. I'll go ahead and leave a full list of all the products mentioned and used in this video down below in the description box as well as links on where you can pick them up. If there's an asterisk next to any of those links, that means it's an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. It's a great way to give back to the channel. It doesn't change the sale price or anything. It just gives me a kickback for you using my links. So if you would go ahead and use my links, I would truly appreciate it. And I also leave like generic links to different websites like Macy's, Sephora, Ulta. So if you're shopping online, consider using my links because again, it helps me to put right back into the content. But if you're not comfortable with that, just shop the way you normally shop no must no fuss but I'll also leave a link to buy me a coffee so you can buy me a coffee if you want to contribute in that way and you should also go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter because we have fun over there and until my next video which will be very soon I'll talk to you bye guys